Officially, this has to be the craziest mini PC setup that I've ever put together, but it's insanely fast. What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the all new One X M1. This is One X player's first mini PC to hit the market. And the overall design here is very reminiscent of their eGPU, the One X GPU. But this is a full fledged mini PC. It's running Windows out of the box. You can add up to 64 gigabytes of RAM to this. The one I have here has 32 and we've got a 16 core 22 thread CPU that can do up to 60 watts in this mini. USB 4 running at 40 gigs and we've also got an Oculink port here. So if you did want to connect their 1X GPU, you definitely could do it. And of course we will by the end of the video. Inside of the box, obviously, we're going to get the M1 Mini PC. We also get our USB Type-C cable for power and a 100 watt power supply. So this is a PD charger. You could charge other devices up with it. But obviously, this is going to be powered over USB and not a barrel jack like other Mini PCs on the market. It does have fully controllable RGB on the front and the rear. Over here on this side is where most of our I.O. is going to be located. 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Ethernet, micro SD card slot, two full size USB 3.2 ports, display port, HDMI, dual USB 4 on this thing. And up front, we've got our power button, RGB button, and a mode button. With this, we can control the TDP directly on the unit, or we can use software. And hidden away under the compartment with the screw in it, we've got an Oculink port. This is gonna allow us to connect a really fast eGPU like their One X GPU. I've got the unit sitting right beside it. And with this, we get an RX 7600 MXT up to 120 watts. And it really does put out some good performance. So we will be connecting these two units together by the end of the video, but I definitely wanna take a look at the M1 all by itself. Getting to the storage on the M1 is super easy. We've got a little magnetic compartment on the bottom. We're just gonna lift that off. We can access that NVMe SSD. I've got a one terabyte drive installed here, but I believe over on their website, you can get up to a two terabyte from the factory. Again, fully controllable RGB on the front and the rear. Got this little button here, but we've also got their One X console installed, which will allow us to control it from software. But if you want to swap it on the fly, not a problem. And with this, we've got it on the front and the rear. And when it comes to the overall specs of the new One X Player M1, for the CPU, they opted to use the Intel Core Ultra 9 185H. With this, we get 16 cores, 22 threads, six performance cores up to 5.1 gigahertz and eight efficiency cores up to 3.8. Plus we've got those two low power efficiency cores up to 2.5. The built-in Intel AI Boost NPU up to 1.4 gigahertz and Intel Art Graphics. So we're working with an iGPU right now, but we will connect that eGPU. This will do up to 2.35 gigahertz. And you can pick this up from their website with either 16, 32, or 64 gigabytes of pre-installed memory. It is so dim running in dual channel at 5600 megahertz. We've also got Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and this is running Windows 11 out of the box. Before we get into testing, there's a few things I wanted to show you here. Now, obviously we've got the Intel Core Ultra 9 185H. This is actually a really great performer when it comes to the CPU side of things. IGPU can definitely use a little loving over here, but we've got 32 gigs of 5600 megahertz RAM. Of course, that Arc IGPU. This will automatically allocate up to 18.1 gigabytes. And since we're using an Arc GPU, we do have access to the Arc Control Center. With this, not much that we can actually change in terms of performance, but we do have our overlay. There's a couple little things under our global settings that we can mess with scaling and things like that. But in the end with the stock software, not a lot of tweaking that we can do, but luckily One X has actually added their One X console. So from here, we've got our performance. We can go all the way down to 15 Watts, up to 60 Watts, totally change that fan curve if we want to. So we can fully adjust this. We've got two different modes that we can use. Change resolution directly from here, RGB effect on the unit. We've got the front and the rear RGB. Performance overlay, if you don't want to set something up like Afterburner all by yourself. We can disable turbo mode on this and it will send more to the iGPU. But with newer games in this chip here, I do suggest leaving turbo on. And we've also got their game launcher built in. It'll scan through all of our default directories, download some artwork, give us some information on the game itself. We can update from, where is it? Right here. So we can check for updates if we've got any available. Up to date, ready to go. 
and we can minimize it. And by pressing that front lightning bolt button on the mini PC, it'll bring up the One X console. So obviously I'm in 60 watt mode. We're gonna take it to 30 real quick. I've got CPU-Z up and running. I'm just using hardware info. So when we're set at 30 watts, we've got a little bit of boost over up to around 35. And I wanna make sure we can do 60 with this. Actually, I may have to stop this, restart it, yeah. Should jump up to 60 watts. And yeah, I mean, we can get a sustained 60 watts out of this CPU in this mini PC. So again, when it comes to CPU intensive tasks, this little thing can definitely handle it. But of course they're advertising this as a mini gaming PC. So we're gonna get into some gaming. But the first thing I did was run a couple benchmarks. 3D Mark Night Raid coming in with a 28,650. And I also ran Time Spy, looking decent here with a 3,796. And I know that these little Intel Core chips do benchmark pretty high when it comes to these iGPUs and synthetic benchmarks, but let's test out some real world gaming. Ratchet and Clank ripped apart 1080p, low with XESS set to balance, plus I've got the AMD frame gen enabled. Nixus added this to most of their PC ports, and it does work with these Intel iGPUs. It actually works quite well. We're seeing a pretty decent frame rate here. It's playable like this. Seeing an average of 70 FPS. Next up, we've got Shadow of the Tomb Raider just using the built-in benchmark, and I'll tell you with these newer ARC drivers, we are seeing better performance with games like this. We're now seeing an average of 59 FPS, 1080p low settings. On older drivers, we were seeing an average anywhere from 42 to 48, depending on what Core Ultra I GPU we were using. Spider-Man Miles Morales, 1080p, low settings, XE SS set to balanced. Average of around 74 FPS with this one, which is much better than I thought we'd be getting out of this machine here, given that we are using that Arc I GPU. And the final one I wanted to test here on the built-in integrated graphics was Cyberpunk 2077. This is one that's always given us an issue on art, and we still can't hit 60 FPS, at least at 1080 with XESS set to performance. We're right there on the edge, seeing an average of around 55 FPS. Okay, so dropping the resolution down on most of this is really gonna help out with that frame rate, but there's a way we can really up the GPU performance on this. There's actually two ways we could do it, over USB 4 using a Thunderbolt eGPU, or over Oculink using an Oculink eGPU. When it comes to the One X GPU, this does offer both methods, but in order to get the best connection, I'm gonna be going with Oculink here, Instead of running up to 40 gigs over USB 4 or Thunderbolt 4, with Oculink, we can do up to 63 gigs, which is really gonna unlock the performance that this Radeon 7600 MXT can put out. And by the way, the One X GPU does put out up to 100 watt PD charging, so it could also power the M1 Mini PC. And I've come up with a weird setup. On the left, we've got the One X GPU. On the right, flip backwards, we've got the M1 Mini PC just so my cables go straight to each other. And that One X GPU can do up to 120 watts with the turbo button enabled on the front. So we've got that little lightning bolt over there. Also adjustable RGB. I've just set it to the same, keep it nice and even. We can still access those Intel Arc graphics, but instead of using that, we've got the Radeon RX 7600 MXT with eight gigs of GDDR6 VRAM. Basically, all I had to do here was just plug it in over Oculink, install the correct drivers, and we're good to go. I ran some benchmarks here because I wanted to give you a little bit of a comparison between the iGPU performance and the new eGPU performance. 3D Mark Night Raid, now we're getting a 55,950, and if you remember, before, just on the iGPU, we were scoring around 28,000. I also ran the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark, and we're now a little over 10,000 with this setup here. Before, just on the iGPU, 3,796. So this is a big leap in GPU performance, and it really does transfer over to real world gaming. The, heading back to that Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark, now we're at 1080p, very high, with no XESS, seeing an average of 134 FPS. So that's a nice little jump there. I also tested out Spider-Man Miles Morales 1080p, very high settings. And before, I mean, it was definitely playable, but we needed that frame gen on and some XESS. But to tell you the truth, I don't think I disabled frame gen. 
Either way, we're getting an average of around 180 FPS. And finally, back to Cyberpunk 2077, but this time we don't need any FSR. I'm at ultra settings, 1080p, 82 FPS on average. So yeah, with an eGPU connected over Oculink, this is definitely an awesome little gaming machine. And when it comes to that RX 7600 MXT, even over Oculink, I do consider it a 1440p high gaming card or 1080 Ultra. For being 1X players, first mini PC, I think they did a pretty good job here. And I know they wanted to stand apart from other mini PCs on the market. And that's one of the big reasons they went with this design. Some people love it. Some people hate it. I personally do like the look of it. I think it sits up really nicely on a desk. And of course, you can use this all by itself with that Intel Core 185H. It does put down some great CPU performance. But then when it's time to game, you can always connect an eGPU. But that's going to wrap it up for my first look at the One X M1 Mini PC. Definitely let me know in the comments below what you want to see running on this. Uh, hopefully I can get my hands on their new eGPU coming to market soon. It's actually got an RX 7800. I think that's definitely going to unlock a lot of performance with these mini PCs. But if you're interested in learning a little more about the M1, I'll leave some links down in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.